if the education system, the school system, isn't going to deliver young people into the world of work who, frankly, can add up, we've got a real problem. The love of mathematics, it's, it's beauty, it's, it's patterns, it's, it's mystery, it's language, I think has probably been stultified in a lot of cases rather than encouraged. The number of times people say to me, oh, I was never any good at mathematics at school, and it's almost a badge of honour not, not to have been good at mathematics. But no one would ever say to you, oh, you know, I can't read, and I'm proud of it that I can't read. Meet Professor David Burgess, former head of the National Centre for Excellence in Maths and sometime magician. Write on the board three different single digit numbers. And I'm going to make a prediction here. I'm going to fold up now. I'll give it to your teacher. Hold it up. I can't hold what I've got there. But in this edition of School Matters, there'll be no sleight of hand as the outspoken professor makes an impassioned plea to improve mathematics teaching in this country. Think about all the two-digit numbers we can form using those three digits. He'll lay bare, as he sees it, the crisis facing the teaching of this crucial subject. What do they come to? 220. And now, divide 220 by 10. What do we get? 22. 22. Now, let's see what I wrote. And he'll conjure up his solutions to the problem. What's it say there? 22. 22. OK. Oh, it's not magic, it's mathematics. Mathematics can and should be fun. Whatever topic we're teaching, there's always an element of challenge, an element of enjoyment to be had from it. The real dangers in this country are, that at primary level, Though we have great teachers, uh, sometimes their mathematical knowledge is not good enough to fully understand where the subject is going to. As secondary, I have to be absolutely frank and say we have a lot of dull and boring teaching of mathematics, what appear to be even people who don't really understand or enjoy the subject. Prime Minister Gordon Brown says it's unacceptable that we still have 150,000 children leaving primary school who aren't numerate. And he's right. But we've known about this mass crisis for decades, and successive governments have tried to tackle it with countless initiatives. Well, let me try and list them down. Uh, there are so many, though. Some of the key ones have been the national curriculum and the associated testing that goes with it. Uh, we also have Ofsted. We also have a primary national strategy, a secondary national strategy. We've brought in coursework and now taken out again. You just go on and on and on. But these initiatives don't really strike at the heart of our issues. We need stability. We need teachers to be trusted. And above all in mathematics, we want a good, solid foundation in mathematical concepts that starts in primary. What number is that, please, John Paul? 47. Well done. Now, how many digits... The first Blair government have? brought in a national numeracy strategy based on individual pupils learning and adopting their own mathematical methods of solving problems. But we know it can confuse some children and parents. I wanted to hear a candid and critical view of the strategy from a complete outsider. So I asked Quinton Letts, father of three and Daily Mail theatre critic, to take a short stroll from theatre land to review a special matinee mass performance at Soho's only primary school. How many tens and 45? Leah, could you read out the number sentence for me from zero to... Quinton failed O-level mathematics and struggles to help his kids with their mathematics homework. She's doing very, very fast. It's, it's much quicker than my maths lessons used to be. And I think that's good, because it makes it more exciting. <laughs> We're meant to be partitioning our numbers. <laughs> it sounds like a sort of political process to me, but I don't know quite what that means. I'm doing a bit of cheating. It was always my forte in maths. So how did Quinton rate this performance? This is a very good children's show. It's a very zesty, perky little number. The teacher struck me as an amazing performer because she showed great stamina. She kept it going through the performance. She got a very good voice, good projection. He liked the performance, but what about the script? 
the jargon of the teaching profession is notorious, and it comes in through this as well. Instead of some, we had um, was it uh, sentences, um, and also there was talk at one time about partitioning numbers, and that was quite beyond me. And so I think if you're, if you're expecting parents to help at home, perhaps try and take some of that jargon out of it. What way on the number line are you going to go? I'm with him there. OK, what's the next number sentence? And like me, Quinton was left wondering, what's the point of the national numeracy strategy? I think in combination with lots of other things, it, sh and, uh, it is useful as a guidance for sort teachers. Sort of frame for As teaching. a frame for teaching. Yeah. But it shouldn't be taken as the, you know, the, the be-all and end-all. Yeah. You will have to use it to, at your discretion. It's giving some of the power back to the teachers, really. Yeah. The National Numeracy Strategy was a really good start to improving mathematics in primary schools. But it should have been just the start and not the finish. What we need now is to make numeracy in primary schools a real mathematical foundation for the future. After extensive research, I discovered there was an exciting and challenging way to teach mathematics, and it could be found in Hungary. Here from the start in kindergarten, children are taught correct mathematical terms, laying the foundation for logical and conceptual thought. Once they start formal schooling, the whole class work in a highly interactive way. Teaching is fast, pacey and dynamic. And the pupils are engaged and involved in their learning, discussing strategies and explaining their thinking. A thousand miles away, amid the rolling chalk downs of Wiltshire, I'm conducting my very own Hungarian experiment. Based on this international research, we at Plymouth University have adapted the Hungarian approach with the Mathematics Enhancement Program, MEP. Oh, hello. Good morning. It's David Burgess here to see the head. And now children at one of Salisbury's primary schools and 20 others around the country are experiencing maths teaching Hungarian style. So why are heads keen to give it a try? We felt there were often gaps in children's understanding uh, and certainly gaps in children's sort of mathematical thinking. And often we were having to relearn. Um, and we felt that maybe the, the, the sort of logical progression uh, wasn't perhaps embedded enough in, in the strategy itself. I believe these gaps are at the heart of the mathematics crisis. But they're gaps that can be filled by encouraging the use of correct mathematical terms, logical thinking, interactivity, and lively informed teaching. These are all crucial parts of the Mathematics Enhancement Programme, which they've been using here for two terms. I dropped in to see how teacher Chloe Doyle and her Year 4 class are getting on with it. Five, six, seven. What does 2D mean? It has length. Good girl. Can anybody help on with the second one? Loudly, Courtney. And it has width. Well done. It has length and it has width. But it doesn't have any depth. OK? You touch your three-dimensional shapes on your desk, OK? You can touch them because they have depth, which makes them 3D. The main principle behind it is about interactive teaching, with the aim of all children, whatever their ability, to become mathematical thinkers. It's about becoming mathematical thinkers. I want to see if you and your partner can recall the names of these 2D shapes. Are you ready? You're going to have 15 seconds. Off you go. Discuss with your partner. She's asking her ideas about the shapes and they're working together. They're putting their ideas forward. So it's this underlying idea that they, they could all become mathematical thinkers. Could you come up and explain to the class what these words mean? So come on, you're going to be the teacher. The edges are the straight bits of the shape. They enjoy what they're doing, they're not stressed, they're quite happy to come to the front and, and write in front of the class. No one's sort of worried about that, even when they do sometimes get it wrong. So it's that ethos in the classroom that's important, where, where children are quite keen to be involved and, and no reservations, not shy. So I'm looking for some shapes that you think has three lines of symmetry. Ready? One, two, three, show me. 
show your partner. I think it's really nice to teach because it's far more interactive. I like the range of activities and that the children are far more hands-on and they're doing more as opposed to it just being mm -hmm. pen and paper. Um, and I think a lot of the concepts that we dwell on in lessons come from the children where yes. they're explaining their misconceptions. Absolutely. Well, if you turn the triangle around and you do it again, then you'll still have a line like that. I think they love the opportunity of being the teacher. Yes. And that's, a and that's new really thing. important because that yeah. goes to long term memory, then, you see. Yeah. That's a really important yeah. part of it. And I think they learn an awful lot by explaining to each other as yes. well, even if they're not at the front, yes. because they're listening yes. and they're questioning well, each again, other. And again, they become the teacher, don't they? Absolutely, yeah. Um, I disagree with um, the one over there. Come and show me. I think the biggest thing so far is how confident the children are. Um, and, and particularly, you know, children in the lower groups who perhaps would never have volunteered to, to take part in the lesson without prompting are actually very keen and eager and, and able and want to take part and enjoy it. There you are. I said maths could be fun, but for many it's agony. I travelled to Birmingham, a city proud of its scientific and mathematical roots. These are Birmingham's golden boys, the pioneers of the Industrial Revolution, recently regilded and proudly back on display. The mathematical calculations of James Watt, Matthew Bolton and William Murdoch transformed both this city and the world. But how will today's citizens cope with simple calculations? How would you respond to that question? 25% yeah. of 60, 60 kilograms. kilograms. Um, that's a quarter, that's 15 kilograms. Fantastic, well done. 25% of 60 kilograms. 12, is it? I haven't got a clue. 25% of 60 kilo is 15 kilo. Right, OK, and then 800 divided by 40? 20. 800 divided by 40, I ain't got a clue. 2,000 or 200. 800 divided by 40? Is 20. Uh, I'm just going to guess 12. I'm not sure on that one. How many 40s and 80? Two. Two. So 40 to 800 would be? Two. 20. 20, yeah. Well done. 20. Thanks very much. Considering I've been in school for five years. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see ya. Bye. What struck me was there were some really good answers. Some people were very fast and got it right. But if I take our average younger person, they were really struggling even on the easiest question. And that's borne out by the figures. With less than half of all GCSE students getting a grade C or above in mathematics. Simon Topham is blowing the whistle on this desperate shortfall in math skills. He owns and runs the Acme Whistle Company and doesn't even trust a GCSE qualification. I can take somebody on with a GCSE grade C, say, in maths, and they can't actually do long division. Something as basic as that. So you can't even take the qualifications that somebody has as a guide to the kind of mathematical skills you're employing. In fact, we do our own tests now, and roughly half of all the applicants we have struggle to pass those basic tests. I think it's a tragedy that so many um, children are able to get a reasonable mark by getting things nearly right. In the world of work, six out of ten doesn't, doesn't happen. That might have got you a grade C at GCSE. It doesn't get you a grade C here, I'm afraid. I wanted to hear the views of Lord Digby Jones, the former head of the CBI and now Trade Minister. We're not actually getting enough people who just have basic maths. And, and have an ability in basic maths coming into the world of work. Therefore, what happens is employers, and indeed colleges of education, they all have to do remedial training. They all have to go through three or four months of being taught to count. And, and, and that's dreadful. You know, at the end of the day, the employer's the customer, and the education system is delivering a product into the world of work. And in that respect, they've got to have them fit for purpose. What Sir Digby said, I, I do agree with. He's absolutely right to say after 11 years, look how poor some of our people are in mathematics. But what he doesn't do is to say, OK, let's look at the strategies that will improve the situation so that in fact even after five or six years, they will know enough mathematics for the rest of their lives. And even those taking GCSE mathematics are not keen to carry on studying it. Less than 10% of GCSE pupils 
go on to take A-level mathematics. And only 10% of those choose to study at that degree level. So why is that? I caught up with these students who are just about to sit their GCSEs. I won't be taking it past GCSE. Why not? Um, I know it gets too hard, I think. And I'd uh, rather focus on other subjects. I don't particularly like the subject. I just want to get over and done with. I just find it boring. I, I like maths. I find it really fun. So it's challenging to the mind. And like, once you start a puzzle, you know, you can't stop really until you get it done. I don't plan on taking maths later on in life at all, really. I just don't really see it as like a stepping stone to what I want to do. How do you think they could improve the teaching of it? Um, like, in, introduce uh, like new ways of teaching it, like more active ways, maybe. Like, so we're not like just out of a textbook all the time. Well, the teacher does make quite a bit of difference. If they teach in like a dull way, you're obviously not going to pay much attention in class. If the teacher is like nice and wants to teach you, then you want to learn. There's a desperate shortage of mathematics teachers, with a large number of posts remaining unfilled. Maggie Fall, head of maths at this Catholic secondary school, knows all about this skill shortage. One of the major problems that we've had is actually recruiting maths teachers. Mm -hmm. That's, that's really very difficult. We advertised two months ago and we, we, we had not one. So a lot of our maths staff have been from other, other countries and other cultures. And that's, I think, enriched our maths here yes. in, in lots of ways. Today in the lesson, we are going to try and understand how we construct and solve linear equations. Olga, a maths graduate from Russia, is just one of the latest international signings at St. Joseph's. Previously, they brought in maths teachers from Hungary, Italy, India, China and Latvia. What happened with the scales? It came unbalanced. It came unbalanced. So what do you need to do to keep it balanced? Add another 10 to the other side to make it balance out. Fantastic. What do we need to write next, Veronica? An equals. Why is it equal? What can we see? Because it's balanced. Balance. Straight write down equals. Why do you love mathematics so much? I, I really like the subject. I think it's so logical and so beautiful. Oh. And it's everywhere around us, but also it's so simple and so complicated at the same time. Every day you come in the classroom and every day you're trying to show them how beautiful it is. What have I done to this equation, 2x equals to 8, to get 4x equals to 16. You double it 2 to get 4. Yeah. And then you double it 8 to get 16. Yeah, fantastic, well done. Our own research uh, that compares progress in mathematics shows that Russia d does exceedingly well, and uh, by year 7 they're mm -hmm. well ahead of us. Can you explain why? In Russia, you have to know maths to, be, to succeed. Yes. You can't say, oh, I'm not good at maths, no. because you would be Basically, embarrassed to you say can't that. Hear, can't you? Exactly. I, that was the first thing, actually, which I was surprised with. Yeah. I noticed that, oh, I'm not good at maths, and that's OK. And even to the extent that to be good at maths is sort of standing out of the crowd, you know. She's right. People don't have much time for mathematicians in this country. There's very much an image problem. Math mathematics has an image problem. Um, some work was done a few years ago where school kids described what they thought mathematicians were like. And the pictures that they drew are, are very unflattering. And uh, the, the writing was, was equally so. The writing said things like mathematicians are usually um, old, they, they're usually wrinkled because they think so hard, quite often fat because they never do any exercise, and they never have any friends. Or they might have the odd friend who's a mathematician. It is very striking that you, you go to, to continental Europe, you go to France, and it, you know, being a mathematician is, is a real mark of status. Go to Hungary, go to Finland, and, and people aspire to mathematics. They see it as, as a real achievement to be good at mathematics. And that's a culture shift that we want to try and bring about in this country as well. And all the international tables of mathematics attainment tell the same story. England doesn't do very well in these league tables. Uh, it may do slightly better now than perhaps a decade ago, but we're still way down at the bottom for an industrial nation. I think it's interesting to look at Finland, though, who was alongside us a decade ago, but now coming top. Okay, good morning. Good morning. 
Finland's taken on board many of the Hungarian style teaching strategies. Teachers are trusted. Uh, there are no national tests. You just go to your local school. I do think there are, are ways of improving the situation. The government has been trying to boost the recruitment of mathematics teachers with TV commercials like this. You feel really great with yourself when you've solved something. Well, I can actually do this. You look at all the working out you've done and it's just like, I did that. Like, really giddy with yourself. The main message of the campaign is that uh, working with young people is an exciting and enjoyable um, profession. And within that, teaching maths, as we now have a dedicated maths advert, it's great to see people enjoying solving problems and, and working things out with the teacher. And, and it's important to get a sense of that enjoyment and the uplift that that can give to teachers in seeing that happen amongst their pupils. It's all about angles, isn't it? 15% off at your yeah. favourite shop. When I straighten my hair, it's a 180-degree angle. <laughs> <laughs> if you go back to 2000, um, we were probably recruiting just about 1,000 people a year to maths teacher training. We're now recruiting over 2,000 people a year. The recruitment's been really good. I mean, TDA have done a superb job in bringing people into the profession. I think my concern would be, are they the right people? We have many young people coming in, only going to spend a couple of years in the job. They get rid of their student loans, they have nice golden hellos. I want people who love teaching, who love kids and who love mathematics. I don't think we are getting people who are half-hearted about teaching at all. With the range of people coming in, whether they be young graduates or career changes over 30, what we find is people have a real interest in the, in the subject they want to teach. They are committed to doing a really good job with the pupils and they really feel um, that they want to serve the community in that. And I think that's a real uh, bonus. But recruitment drives won't solve the big problem. The fact that the vast majority of primary teachers don't feel equipped to teach mathematics. I'm doing my party piece again, but this time to an audience of primary school teachers, all using the Mathematics Enhancement Program. It says 22. And all credit to them, they're not ashamed to admit their weaknesses. Most of us have only perhaps hit O-level maths. Some of us hit it a very long time ago. I mean, it's GCSE now. Um, and some of us would admit that we struggle with maths. A lot of people end up teaching maths who really aren't mathematicians and haven't got a feel for the subject. So that doesn't mean they can't teach it as a subject, but they don't, because they don't have the sort of wider sort of feel for mathematics, they, they often can't communicate the real depth of mathematics and show how it all fits together. Exactly my point. And that's why I'm leading this after-school training session. But the teachers can find it quite a challenge. You'll see that this sort of concept comes up lots and lots, and it is quite a difficult one for pupils to start with, even at Key Stage 2. So going through there, clearly you've just got the one line of symmetry there, you've got the one down there, haven't you? You've got the one across there, but the one down there, you two there. This one, none, OK? And this one, remember we're looking at mirror lines, not, not rotational symmetry, and this one has four, OK? Some of it was catching me out, yes. Some of it was definitely... And it, you feel so, it's, it, a lot of it is much higher level than the children have been used to doing, and likewise the teachers. Some of it was tough because you thought, crikey, am I going to know the answer to this? And am I going to be asked the answer and I can't explain it? So it is tough, but that's what we do to the children. We put them on the spot, so it's good that you have that experience. Try to fill in the holes and the problems that you may have in some of your mathematical understanding, which is not to criticise you at all. No way am I trying to make you feel that uh, you're inadequate in mathematics. I'm trying to give you the confidence to actually realise that mathematics is simple. <laughs> Chloe Doyle's here, brushing up on her equations in algebra. You will recall she's been teaching mathematics under our experimental programme to her Year 4 class in Salisbury. Because, um... There's different shapes and um, colours and lines in it. It would have a different number of symmetry. Well done, good girl. Excellently explained. A house point. She's absolutely right. All our evidence will show we're not we're not in any way decreasing in set scores. And what we're doing is putting a strong mathematical foundation that hopefully will get built on later on. So we would hope it's the real dividends come later. Show me with your farms. If you found today, actually, I really understood everything today, and and I'm quite happy. Interesting. Okay. 
It's been a really good lesson, uh, very active. Uh, she's done really well to keep the task, keep them on task for such a long lesson. Uh, all the children seem really pleased to provide their solutions, their methods. Sometimes they've got them wrong. It hasn't been a problem getting them wrong. Uh, I think they've all progressed. It's been really good. I think some of the staff actually found it quite difficult at first because although the children are much more proactive, you are you're driving the pace and you're, and you're having to think about transitions yeah. and what they need. And yeah. I think that, to be honest, that has been quite tiring for mm. some people. Well, I can see you're on the go all the time, aren't you? Yeah, and you're yeah. having to, although the, the lesson planning given to you by our given to us by you is very thorough and it's fantastic in terms of types of extension mm. activities and questioning we do you do need to amend yeah, it to absolutely. suit the needs of the children and you've got to amend it at, on the go on you? the go yeah. and but i find that by plugging those little gaps by making them do hands on things they're then getting the concepts much you know they're really embedded now they're getting them much quicker which is excellent well done all of you you've worked really hard today okay excellent the government is now proposing yet another maths initiative this time Gordon Brown is suggesting extra one-to-one -one tuition for those children who struggle with the subject. But isn't this just more sticking plaster, not a real solution? In this program we've seen techniques and strategies that you can use in the classroom. These include using correct mathematical notation and vocabulary. Working interactively with the whole class. Encouraging pupils to play the part of the teacher. Could you come up and explain to the class what these words mean? And helping all children to think mathematically. What happened with the scales? It came unbalanced. So my challenge to all teachers of mathematics is to try out these strategies in your class.